Hello there, my fellow denizens of the periphery, and welcome to some more Battletech lore. Continuing our adventures in the smaller states outside of the Great Houses, today we're gonna tell the story of a state even more obscure than the other periphery states we covered. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Franck Reaches. At this point we should just be grateful that we have at least a couple of maps of the state, as actual artworks of it is kinda out of the question. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? In a nutshell, the Frank Reaches is a very small periphery state, located in the Capellan Marches, rimward of the Capellan Confederation, spinward of the Magistracy of Canopus, and anti-spinward of the Torian Concordat. Once upon a time, several worlds in the Capellan Marches were jointly settled by Canopian and Torian interests, following the renewal of their political alliance. However, all the worlds within the New Colony region, as it was called, were being heavily taxed, and not sufficiently compensated. Although the area was settled by the two powers, the settlers didn't feel much of a connection to either side, and soon began itching for independence for themselves. Even the Canopian and the Torian back peacekeepers, known as the Colonial Marshals, ultimately renounced their loyalty to their parent nations and pledged their loyalty to the Reaches. The sentiment came to a head in 3060, when one Sherman Malton, the self-proclaimed leader of the new colony region, took Emma Centrella, Magistrix of the Canopians, and Geoffrey Calderon, Protector of the Concord, hostage on the world of Detroit. Malton then asked the Federated Commonwealth for recognition and assistance, an action that the Federated Commonwealth was not inclined to take given their own looming prospect of civil war. The standoff would end when Capellan and Canopian military forces sent by San Liao and commanded by Naomi Centrella quickly landed on the planet and crushed the revolt, resulting in the deaths of Calderon and Malton. Any attempts to identify an outside organization that aided the revolt were inconclusive. Calderon was succeeded by Grover Shraplin, who immediately announced a new alliance with the Capellan Confederation. After the tragedy at Detroit, the new colony region redoubled its calls for a peaceful settlement of their problems, primarily self-governance and taxes, but all these requests were ignored. In 3066, under unclear circumstances, the President Carver Trondel of the Franck Reaches would ask for official recognition from every successor state. The Reaches were recognized as an independent nation by both Comstar and the Free Russell Hague Republic, and shortly afterwards by the Free World League and the Draconis Combine. However, Detroit did not become part of the state. Instead, it was annexed by the Canopians. By 3067, the Franck Reaches consisted of a grand number of eight planets. Unlike many bigger states, they actually prospered during the Jihad. The most obvious benefit was the influx of refugees into the region, moving from all the corners of human space. When the Canopians finally withdrew their forces, the Franck Reaches took the opportunity to reassert their independence. In the late Jihad and the early 3080s, the Reaches expanded the local military forces by adding significant amounts of locally produced tanks to their own colonial marshals, and also hiring several mercenary outfits. The most prominent of these were the Derex Devils mercenary unit, who then became the Franck Cuirassers and began earning great renown by pursuing and destroying Blakist units with great gusto. Both Force Commander Dirk McEvans and the President of the Reaches, Carver Trondel, initiated diplomatic efforts to launch a united front against pirate forces with the nearby Calderon Protectorate. The fact that so many Canopian units left the Reaches high and dry would not be soon forgotten by the Franck Reaches, but President Trondel had to acknowledge that Detroit would stay firmly in Capellan or Canopian hands and the flag of the Franck Reaches was deliberately altered to change one of the stars to a black star, symbolizing the loss of one of their founding members. With the loss of Detroit and its production, the Reaches began concentrating on building up the domestic production of combat vehicles and weapons, 
supplemented by a small type of mechs from Detroit donated by the Canopians. The richest government was keeping the production rate a secret, but intelligence reports indicate that by mid-3081, enough armored vehicles were produced to enable the militia and the Sentinels to field several regiments of armor. By 3085, nationalist sentiments within the refugee and the settler populations had declined via dilution, although the nation remained fiercely protectionist. Rumors that President Trondel intended to retire by 3090 had begun circulating by this point, and with Force Commander McEvans apparently having no interest to become a president himself, despite widespread support, the prospect of a crisis in leadership was looming. The lack of a dedicated military academy continued to hamper the efforts of the Reach's military to develop an officer corps of their own. With the Sentinelry Academy incomplete, despite its construction having begun in 3081. To compensate, the Reaches initiated a military exchange program with the Fieldveld Coalition, and the first few graduates from the program were already helping to develop the Reaches military command. Despite all the successes experienced as the Frank Reaches military continued to expand internally, their government continued to maintain the policy of inducting mercenaries into their sentinels by offering landholds as payment for their services. The Reaches had also established a hiring hall on Herodotus alongside those of the other periphery nations, guarding their hall with a permanent detachment of colonial marshals and thereby having a noticeable effect on the black market of the area. Those hired after the intensive interview process conducted by the colonial marshals enjoyed generous contract terms, although the marshals continued excluding any mercenaries with any evidence of piratical activity. The hardline stance taken by the reaches towards piracy began being felt by other nations too, with the magistracy of Canopa seeing an uptick in pirate raids and other activity as the pirate bands were driven out of the Franc reaches. While much of the marshal's manpower was taken up by having to deal with the increasing incidences of violent crimes towards the refugee population, there was enough left to continue hunting and eradicating pirates no matter where they found them. Not all of the marshals were able to adapt to the difficulties of dealing with the large refugee populations though. As was highlighted on the world of Cygnus in 3083, when a marshal attempting to adjudicate over a trial of three locals who murder a Capellan refugee ended up killing more than 80 people when a riot erupted. The loss of the world of Detroit led the economy of the Franc reaches to contract sharply. President Elaine Handley, elected in 3092, initiated a deliberate shift in domestic and foreign policy to attempt to compensate. With strained relations between the Franc reaches and the Magistracy of Canopus and the Torian Concordat, the President looked to the Federated Sons and the Fieldfeld Coalition as a trading market. Establishing a treaty with the Coalition effectively gave the reaches the same trading arrangement with the Sons. President Handley also deliberately pushed for a considerable expansion in the reaches' domestic military-industrial sectors. That was driven by a need to replace the output from the lost facilities on Detroit, but it also generated a trade surplus due to the slow increase in the Reach's military. By the year 3105, the Reaches were producing battlemechs domestically again from two different worlds, Frank and Rockwellan. And the economy was booming to such an extent that a colonization program was initiated in 3099, which saw three new planets colonized, Apian, Mandalas, and Tinkalunas. In another two decades, all the colonies were self-sufficient agriculturally, and by 3135, all were contributing directly to the national gross domestic product of the reaches through their mining, trade, and agricultural surplus. President Handley did retire in 3135, and her successor, Thomas Ganson, continued many of her established policies while also opening trade negotiations with the Capellans and the Magistracy of Canopus. The Marshall Academy had been finished in 3093 and also gave a boon to the Franc Reaches. It ensured that all the graduates had a firm grasp of law enforcement policies as well as military tactics. And the Academy went on to attract students from the rimward regions of the periphery and the inner sphere. As a result of that, the Academy ensured that each received training in the law enforcement practices of their home nation, 
and the lecturers were soon traveling from as far as the Raven Alliance and the Rim Collection to lecture at the Academy. It was particularly attractive to those planets who had declared themselves independent of the Torian Concordat, many of whom sent their highest ranking officers to the Academy for refresher training. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this small but feisty periphery state, the Frank Reaches, for today. It is actually refreshing to narrate the story of one of these smaller nations that doesn't get wiped out or end in a depressing way. Although they have only like a dozen planets, they seem to be doing well. What about you though? What are your thoughts on the Frank Reaches? Did you ever hear about them before? Do share your opinions or questions in the comments below if you want. If you enjoyed the episode or found it informative or entertaining, do click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy and awesome day. This is GDN signing out.